gonna break him, man. We're gonna break him like a horse. Harold Spence on inline skates. Yeah, he he got middle of the Now he takes Trinidad's left hook. And this is a Mayorga tactic. Come Sari, I'm gonna Shinario. Look at the wind. What you talking about now? Look at the wind. What you talking about how? Look at the wind. It's fat. Well, how look at the wind? Yeah. I guarantee I'm Christian. Grab that. All right, let me ask you a question. Don't try to go to the body. Don't try that little. 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 You got hurt by a camper. Whatever I got hurt by a camper. And you got hurt by a camper. And you got hurt by a camper. We see, we see you get wobbly, Lay. We see you get wobbly. Then what? We see you. It don't matter. It don't matter. Hood. Wait till I get you. Wait till the dog with the vision on the boogie man. You can't be the boogie man if I'm that guy. Everyone knows I'm that guy. You're not that guy. I'm that guy. Numbers don't lie, and I'm the number one guy. I'm that guy. You're not the number one guy. Numbers don't lie. He's a great man too, but I'm gonna break him. And. I'm going to show everybody why I am the best fighter in boxing, period. Well, it's not that good. Um, you know, Regis stopped him in the first round, too. Regis stopped him in the first round, too, man. Like, who who that guy beat to be a two-time world champion? He beat two champions. Who? Who? He beat... <laughs> Troy Noski and he beat R Ricky Burns, which was a three-time world champion. Troy who? Okay. Every title I took, Sean Porter, he was champion. A one he was a one-time, one-way champion. It don't matter. I'm taking it. Okay. I'm taking it. Well, you got the opportunity to Like I said, to you take line them up, I'm going to knock them down every time. It don't matter what happens. Personal life, whatever. Man. Hey, man, give me him. You sure you want him? Yeah, this is easy work. Get him this, out of this there. This ain't no easy hey, work Hey, you want him? Yeah. Oh, I know it's not easy work. Uh -huh. I definitely know it's not okay. easy work. Okay. Just I definitely sure. know that. Just make sure. That, I ain't that naive. I like to go fishing. Everybody know th those are my hobbies. Man, that's cat. He's not catching me with no fishing pole, hey, listen. man. I'm the biggest. You listen. can't catch me with no fishing pole. Listen. What it look like catching Moby Dick with a fucking hey. fishing pole, hey. man? Hey. They all smoke bud. I, I, y all, y all, hey. You already know how that go. It's hey. legal in Vegas, too, so we're going to smoke your ass up. Hey, y'all do It's legal in Vegas, smoke too, so we're going to smoke. We're going to roll you up and smoke you up, too, man. Y'all hey. get Hey, hey y'all get that new buzz strand, man. Hey, but you know the crazy part about it? I mean, he gonna come in with the mentality, and, you know, it's gonna probably take a few rounds, but and he a stubborn dude. So, but we gonna, like I said, man, everybody get broke. We gonna break him, man. We gonna break him like a horse. On July 29th, 2023, Errol Spence Jr. faced Terrence Crawford at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. In the final seconds of the second round, Crawford landed a left to the neck and a right on the chin, dropping Spence for an eight count from referee Harvey Dock. In the fourth round, Crawford had Spence bleeding from the nose and out landing him throughout the round, having Spence's face red as a beat. In the sixth round, Spence warned for low blows. Crawford continued showing more power, taking another round. In the seventh round, after a minute, a right hook from Crawford on the chin and down went Spence for an eight count from the referee. In the final seconds, Crawford again dropped Spence for an eight count. In the eighth round, Crawford continued having his way until the final 30 seconds when Spence came back with some offense. In the ninth round, Crawford continued the beating until referee Doc Wisely had seen enough and called a halt after eight unanswered punches. When Tito falls, 
y haya dos tres segundos de silencio el único viejo que va a salir corriendo es el papá para el, el, el único el único a, pro, a proteger a su niño que, que sabe que ahora piensa, la, piensa en tu esposa piensa en tu familia piensa en tu hijo piensa en todo el mundo yo te voy a noquear pero pero si tu papá es vivo yo no te quiero mandar al psiquiatra no te quiero mandar al psiquiatra bien jodido que no reconozcas a nadie Knock out in nine. Cartita, cartita. Mira, ha subido de flor. Le pasó, le pasó de la olla a Don Young. And now this old wrecked and rusty car is next. He's going down. That's how I'm going to have you, October 2nd. Do you, do you see yourself here? That's how you can be. He goes, and your dad's going to be able to pick you up. Y esto es re, esto, esto es re, esto es real. And this is real. This esto is no blah blah blah. Esto es real y esto no es. Esto se te va a deducir, se le van a deducir 100 mil dólares del contrato a Ricardo Mayorga. And this is for the doc from your purse, a hundred thousand dollars. También, también quiero darle las gracias a a la gerencia del Madison Square Garden. Also to the people of the Madison Square Garden. Y October 2, 2004. World boxing star Felix Trinidad returns to the ring against new rising star Ricardo Mayorga. The first round was the second coming of Hegler Hearns. Mayorga threw dozens of power punches, many of them landing and even pushing Trinidad back. Trinidad came back with his own power punches at the end of buckling Mayorga. The second round was more war, Trinidad blasting many more power shots to take the round. The fourth was another big round for Trinidad as he landed more power. He hurt Mayorga with a liver shot and Mayorga was very tired. The fifth was a huge round for Tito. This fight was just an all-out war. Tito landed over 60% of his power shots and really had Mayorga in trouble at the end. The seventh round was more of the same. Both guys throwing nothing but power shots and their chins are holding up so far. The eighth was another slugfest. Mayorga went down from a hard body shot. Mayorga's first time down ever. Mayorga got up. Trinidad went on the attack and knocked down Mayorga with some hard left hands. Mayorga's in real trouble. Trinidad knocks Mayorga down again and ref Steve Smoger stops the fight. I think it was pretty evident that it was over. He was tired. He had no steam on his punches. He was just making it out of the way of the punches. Then boom, there's a right hand and left uppercut again. The left uppercut was ferocious tonight. And he just went ahead and went down. To the winner by knockdown victory, Thomas and Caballeros de Cuba Otto Puerto Rico. Felix Pique.
it's a fighter that is basically harder and a better puncher and more dangerous than Barrera, Mala, Morales, all of them guys, and they never came to the table except Augie. Damn, right. I'm looking good. All right. But Barrera and Morales, many observers feel, will be fights that really define you as the great fighter you want to be recognized as. Yes. When do you think you will get in the ring with them, or vice versa? Listen, I'll tell you, and you know, Larry, that I wanted them in the ring for this fight, and they wouldn't come. Now, you can tell there's a little bit of a thing on my throat, but you know what I mean? I came to the ring as a champion, as a five-year celebrating my reign, and that guy tried to destroy it. But Morales and Barrera will come 2001 when they want it. And when they want it, they'll get knocked out, because I want it now. I want Barrera next, I'm going to knock him out, and I'm going to and I'm gonna make history and bring it back to Sheffield, bring it back to England. Whoop, did it. Is fear not in your vocabulary now? So fear. What is it going to be? Yeah, fear is. Fear Allah, you mean? Who else can I fear? Right, apart from Allah. I, I can't fear any human being. What's a human being gonna do to me? Got two arms and two legs and a chin like me. Being here, being in the, I'm in the best possible condition that I could ever be in. Say, say he does take your shots and it is a long hard trench warfare then, sort then of he battle. just gets beat up for longer than después de esa pelea va a soñar como el patrón de barrera todo el tiempo he says with all, with his, all his talk about how he's going to knock me out and all the things he's been saying he said tell him to get himself prepared well because after this fight he'll be dreaming of Marco Antonio Barrera on April 7, 2001, one of the biggest and best-selling fights in featherweight history took place between Mexican Marco Antonio Barrera and British star undefeated Nassim Hamad. As a result, this fight became best-selling in this weight category, selling 310,000 pay-per-views. The favorite in the fight was Nassim Hamed, 3-1 in his favor. The first round saw the flashy Nas play to the crowd and grimace at Barrera as he head-hunted with his powerful left hand ready to pounce as soon as Barrera attacked. But it soon became evident Marco was not going to bring the fight to Nassim. Instead, the challenger boxed cautiously, probing with a stiff jab occasionally followed by a straight right and landed some heavy counter left hooks. By the middle rounds, both fighters were fully committed to their strategies. Hamed tried again and again to land his power shots, but Barrera's plan to circle away from Hamed's left put him in a great spot to fire his own left hooks which connected with authority on Hamed's body and head. The Prince is the aggressor. Right hand on the left. Herrera is fighting the way he is. Herrera lands a jab. Stay away from that left hand. Big left hand by Herrera inside. He hasn't got in one position yet. Ooh. Like he's doing more damage to you. Rather than saying, there you are. He's been thrown off. Huge left hand. You want a solid fighter like Barrera doing, clowning with a clown. Big Don't... right hand to the body again. But he's starting to pick up the power. Naz stalking and trying to land that left foot. Counter punch, counter punch. You see the Prince just will not finish up with a shot. Very professional. By round 10, Emmanuel Stewart started begging Naz for a knockout. Barrera was just three minutes away from a dominant win. Nevertheless, Hamed came out swinging in the final stanza, searching for the one big shot that could salvage the night and his undefeated record. Hamed's reckless attack did not impress Barrera, however. All three scorecards declared Barrera the winner and new featherweight champion of the world. After that punishment, Nassim Hamed didn't activate the rematch clause, had only one fight in London, and retired from boxing. Too much shit. Barrera pounds Nassim into the ring post. Big left hook by Barrera. Marco Antonio.
Talk about the prospect of fighting the boogeyman of the sport right now. This guy is the most feared man in boxing. Chalk it up. Talk about that fight. Um, who's scared of him, though? Right? Ain't nobody scared of him. You know, obviously, I've been calling him out, you know. And I'm going to go in there and do what I do and show everybody that he's not like that. He's not like that. He's overrated. I'm going to go in there and demolish his ass. Do you believe that he's a hype job? I mean, there's a lot of people that think that his opposition has been limited to date. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah, he's a hype job. Who has he fought? You know, blowing up 154 pounders, you know, but he's doing his job. Give him credit. He's doing his job. But don't make him seem like some god when he's not fighting anyone. Like, you know, he's fighting one, he's fighting 154 pounders. So it's cool. But I'm going to go in there and do what I do best. Check in and check out and bring that WBA back to Brooklyn. It's not whether can he fight, can he take a shot and withstand this thunderstorm I'm gonna give his ass. He's great there, so, you know, we're in my hometown. You know, I run New York, I don't jog too much. But come November 2nd, he's gonna know that he done signed the wrong contract. But Abel saying I'm gonna get knocked out in three, I'm be hard as ever I'm gonna hit. Abel is not the one getting in there, folks. I want you to understand that. I believe Abel is writing checks that Janati's ass can't cash. And come Saturday, I'm going to Janati up. I have just one question for, for Stevens. Hey man, are you serious right now? It's cool. It's cool. On November 2nd, 2013, Gennady Golovkin faced Curtis Stevens at Madison Square Garden, New York. Stevens was knocked down in the second round from two hard left hooks by Golovkin. It was a miracle that Stevens was able to get up from the knockdown. Golovkin picked Stevens apart with pinpoint shots in rounds four through seven and got very little back in return from Stevens. It was difficult for Golovkin to go for the body of Stevens without putting himself at risk of getting hit. However, in rounds 7 and 8, Golovkin seemed to hurt Stevens with some hard body shots that had him backing up along the ropes. After the round was over, Stevens' corner chose to stop the fight rather than letting him come out for the ninth and get finished off. to make all hard work look like easy work. So all work for me is easy work. Madonna, we don't make easy work out of his ass, so. Ooh we. That boy better be ready. Please let Marcos Madonna be 100% healthy in this fight. I don't want no excuses. Excuse my language, guy. But I gotta give him this ass beat because you blessed me with the talent. <sighs> I don't know if he's faking like he don't understand English, but after after I came up December December 14th, he's gonna speak English. We ain't worried about Madonna punk ass. He gonna come to fight. It's cool. I'm gonna f you up though. Yeah. And at the end of the fight, you will say, "Good fight. You a bad mother. You are gonna speak some English. You might not say them exact words, but I guarantee you speak some English." And I'm done. That's what he gonna say. He ain't gonna say no moss. Nah, he gonna say that I'm done. That my. That's what happened when that talent go away. All access go away, showtime go away, all the interviews go away, but guess what? I'm gonna stay on top for a long time, so you motherfuckers gonna be around. Uh, Sean, right here, this Sean. They say I ain't taking the fight serious. They say A.B. out of shape. Okay, we gonna let him meet my little friends. Hey, bye. Hey. When that motherfucker start crying, what we gonna tell him? Shut up, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> What's the motto? We don't get tired, we get money. Damn right. That trillion ready wins coming by, way up knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the three-time world champion.
champion in three weight divisions, the reigning WBC lightweight world champion, and the undefeated WBA welterweight champion of the world, introducing Adrian. Look, play Olympia, well, referee. On December 14th, 2013, Adrian Broner faced Marcos Madiana at Alamo Dome San Antonio. Broner got the shock of his life in the opening round as this El Chino, boxing with more patience than before, but being his usual aggressive self, cracked his tormentor with hard shots to the head. Broner smiled, the smile being fake. Early in the fight, Broner seemed to be taking his opponent too lightly, at one point taunting Maidana with sexual gyration. Maidana kept his composure though and continued to push forward. In the 11th, feeling confident and in control, made Donna return the favor with a similar taunt to the delight of the fans in attendance. After 12 rounds that had the crowd hollering with delight at times, it was pretty wide on the cards. It was conclusive at 117 to 109, 116 to 109, 115 to 110, all for Madonna, the new WBA welterweight champ. 116 to 109, and Levi Martinez scores about 117 to 109. But I mean, you guys gonna see the summer fan? I'm gonna knock this, this dwarf the fuck out. That's how it is. You hear that? I'm gonna knock you the fuck out. Flatline. Flatline. You scared? You damn fucking scared? What the fuck am I scared of? You literally, you a stupid fucking dwarf, man. I'm telling you, man, I can't even mess with your fucking head. And your fucking little T-Rex arms, man. My dick's longer than your fucking arms. This guy just here to talk. He trying to talk his way into the fight. That ain't gonna work. We ain't trying to hit none of that. I'm coming to fight. If it was the streets, these niggas would been smoked. And that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what. What gives you that confidence that you can finish him this quickly? I mean, he got a big ass fucking head. It's kind of gonna be kind of hard to fucking miss. I mean, he gets hit by every single opponent. He gets fucking punched by everybody. He literally get punched by everybody. He getting his ass beat by fucking 126 pounders. Not angry, just focused. I'm just really excited to be here in the heart of Brooklyn, and May 28th, we're going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to knock Tank out. You see his nose, right? He motherfucker took the same shit. I hit him with one, and he's just going to knock his whole nose off. Like, look at his nose. His nose is, like, real small. Like, And Bullet, we know what Bullet do. You don't know shit about me. Yeah, we know that none of your fighters got scales. We know that for sure. Tank's going to get knocked down one round, just like that. Not, nothing else need to be said. What about all the little low blows that you threw at little Santa Cruz or when you hit Francisco Fonseca in the back of the head where they should have DQ'd your ass? Shut the fuck up. He's crazy. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm telling the truth, and you know it. They should have DQ'd your ass. We know awkward fighters. Real fighters know awkward fighters. He's not an awkward fighter. He's just a dumbass fighter. <laughs> On May 28, 2022, Gervonta Davis faced Rolando Romero at Barclays Center, Brooklyn. The fierce rivals finally settled their war of words in the ring in a highly anticipated event. Although the early rounds saw the fighters largely feeling each other out, Davis, a three-division world champion, showed off his movement and boxing abilities through those rounds, while Romero, who promised a first-round knockout, was unable to hurt Davis despite pushing the pace initially. Yeah, 
In round six, Davis gave his legions of loyal fans what they had come out to see, landing the decisive blow as he had guaranteed in the pre-fight buildup. Davis closed the show with a fierce counter left hook that sent Romero face first into the ropes and onto the mat. Again, I don't need you guys to believe in me. I've been doing it my whole life. So mark my words, November 6th, you will hear the words and the new undisputed super middleweight. The only difference is right after that, you'll hear the words and still undefeated. Mark my words. That's funny? You think that's funny? A little bit. Yeah? yeah. Well, keep laughing. Yeah. You keep laughing, motherfucker, because you know when you're going to find out? You Real soon. Don't say and you know when you're going to find out? The Don't same time everybody Don't else found out. And you know when that was? You know when they found out? Okay. When it was too yeah. late. That's when they found out. And that's exactly when you're going to find out. Mark my words. You bitch. And you a bitch too. You know the only difference between you and him? Is he's a fat ass bitch and you a bitch. What the fuck are you gonna do? Fuck you. And you a drug cheat. And you a drug cheat. So tell me something. Tell me something. Oscar Valdez can pop positive for something and not get suspended for six months. But he can pop positive for something and get suspended Don't for six months. Don't make excuses. But somehow Don't make excuses cheat. before the fight. You're a cheater. Don't make excuses cheater. before the fight. Trial. You got suspended for six months. Hey, you're a tell cheater. whatever you say. Fuck you. See you November 6th. Fuck you Suck my dick. You wanna yeah, see something you. special fuck on you. Yeah, and feel. You're gonna find out. Same time all the rest of them You're a cheater too. Nevada. Live on Showtime pay-per-view. On November 6, 2021, Canelo Alvarez faced Caleb Plant at MGM Grand Las Vegas. The fight began with a fast start from Plant as he used his jab to take the opener. Canelo finally made the breakthrough in round 11 as he smashed Plant with a left hook which left him on wobbly legs and then floored him with a follow-up right uppercut. The American made it back to his feet, just about, and fought on for seconds more before being put down again and finished with a series of right hands. With the victory, Canelo was crowned the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world. Hey. Mayweather's a beast, but I'm a monster. So, with that said and done, I don't care if Mr. Mayweather wants to box, I'll box. He wants to bang, I'll bang. At the end of it all, I'm walking away with that championship. Because I am the new WBC champion of the world, and there's nobody that will pry that motherfucker out of my hands. You keep that in mind. You can keep that in mind. I'm gonna do this for all the Mexican people, all the American people, and now the people that come along with that. You know what? I'm just tired of keeping my mouth closed and every time I do, somebody has something bad to say. But in this point in time, I'm Mexican to the fullest, proud of it, and I'm gonna show you, all you people, how I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna knock this dude out. If, if he wants to box, I'm gonna box him. If he wants to get knocked out, let's do the damn thing. You wanna dance? We can dance. Not a problem. Floyd and T. Mayweather, thank you for the opportunity. But then again, let's not forget, I am the current WBC welterweight champion of the world, and that will remain. And I'm gonna teach you what it feels like to have that one on your record, bro. I have two, so. And two jaws. Yeah, you know, two and two, you know. I just kind of had it, you know. Not a biggie, no biggie. It's gonna be very, very nice, bro, just to. Uh, do what everybody else has tried and failed, uh, 41 and oh, I think, something like that. Um, 41 of those weren't me. 41 of those couldn't move like me. Oh, I'm talking about class here. <laughs> somebody's, somebody's scared, but you know what? Saturday night, I will hold my hands up. I'm going to put you on your ass. On September 17th, 2011, Floyd Mayweather faced Victor Ortiz at MGM Grand Las Vegas. It was all Mayweather for the opening three rounds with not too much action to be seen. 
Then, in the fourth, the wildly unpredictable Ortiz landed a grazing shot, and he felt he had at last broken through Mayweather's defenses. Ortiz threw a ton of punches, none of which landed, and then, frustrated, Ortiz suddenly leapt up and blatantly butted Mayweather. Ref Joe Cortez called a timeout and deducted Ortiz a point. Ortiz was then all apologetic, wanting to give Mayweather a cuddle and touch his gloves. It all happened pretty fast, but when Cortez had called time in, Ortiz, still apologizing, his hands down after having embraced Mayweather, was cracked by a two flush shots to the head from an angered Mayweather. Ortiz fell hard, and he failed to get up in time. The fight was over. The losing promoter shaves her head. Come on, come on. Because we're going to have the new heavyweight champion right here, Chris Ariola. Let, let's just say this, man. You drink too much. Come, come this scent? Fuck yeah, I drink them. I'll, I'll, I'll drink you off the table any day, also, man. Shit. I'll drink, and then this Saturday, I'm going to fuck you up. That's a gut honest truth. You'll see this Saturday, man. You'll see this Saturday. Man, I, I ain't scared. Ain't nobody scared of you. Trust me, bro. Trust me. You, you'll see this Saturday. Once you get cracked, once you get cracked, you're going to realize. I got cracked plenty of times, bro. I've been cracked plenty of times, and I keep coming. I keep coming. I keep coming. And I'm going to keep coming. This Saturday, I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to win this title. I'm not going to... You know what? I don't even... If it wasn't for you for the title, I'm, I'm there to fuck this guy up. Fuck this guy. This guy's he, now he's yapping. Uh -huh. You know, before I had respect for him I because you know what, he was a quiet dude. You yeah. know what? I was like, all right, no, that's cool. But now I'm gonna fuck you up, you gonna, dude. You're gonna remember me. You're gonna remember. You're gonna remember me. You're gonna remember me, dog. You're gonna remember me. I promise you. I'm, I'm telling you guys this. My food basket. This this Saturday. You guys are going to watch a great fight. Yeah. You guys are going to watch history in the making. Made by me. Not this Haitian. This Mexican is going to do it. I'm going to do it. Promise that. Watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. And for once, for once he says something that got me going. And trust me, you don't, you don't want to don't wanna see me like this. And you already seen me like this. This Saturday, you'll see. And you over there in purple. Shut the fuck up. On May 10th, 2014, Bermain Stavern faced Chris Areola at USC Galen Center, Los Angeles. It was a spirited opening round. While Areola was busier, Stavern was the harder puncher and wobbled Areola with a right hand just as the round ended. Areola responded with a big second round, hurting Stavern along the ropes with a heavy right hand. In the sixth round, Stavern finally found a home for a clean right hand. He nailed Areola, who badly wobbled, then fell to the mat with a delayed reaction. Areola calmly beat the count, but was very shaky and soon found himself on his knees with his face between the ropes after getting dropped again by a flurry of shots. He beat the count again, but Stavern was all over him and rocking him, forcing Reese to intervene. Time. Headshot after headshot. That's it. That's and that it. is That's it. it. That's it, man. Too much, Chris. Tú le faltaste respeto a dos cosas que yo amo. Dos cosas. 
Ayer dijiste algo de mi esposa. Sí. Y ahora mencionaste a mi raza. Y con eso no se juega. Y te voy a noquear. Mayo 6 te voy a noquear. It was clear that Mayorga wanted to anger De La Hoya and then, in the ring, take him into the brawl, where he would have his trump cards in the form of hard blows from different angles. The fight sold 935,000 pay-per-views. Oscar's fee was 20 million, Mayorga received 2.5 million. The fight almost ended in the first round when De La Hoya knocked Mayorga down with a powerful left hook less than two minutes into the bout. It was a stunning beginning of the fight. It was a credit to Mayorga's heart that he rose to his feet and weathered the early onslaught. But it was only a temporary reprieve. Mayorga's punching power makes him dangerous, even when he's hurt. In the third round, he connected with a right uppercut that snapped De La Hoya's head back, forcing him to retreat momentarily. The end came at 1 minute 25 seconds of the 6th round after De La Hoya floored Mayorga with a left-right combination. Mayorga slumped to one knee and the fight was almost out of him. After Mayorga got up, De La Hoya moved in and pummeled Mayorga with at least 8 unanswered punches. Good. 